This reading of poems by Karen McCarthy Wolfe took place at the Poetry and Medicine Symposium to mark the 2015 awards of the Hippocrates Prize for Poetry and Medicine. After the birth, she spends a year and a half taking photographs of dead animals and prizes the most pristine. Her collection includes a mole, its pink fleshy digits spread wide like oars, an open-eyed field mouse with a blade of grass and a blue bottle on its flank, a hawk in a stream, a fledgling wren, a flattened rabbit in threshed straw, its hind legs splayed like an X in a crossword square, a field littered with disintegrating geese, their ribs and feathers matted to form a hardened, gelatinous web. There is also a radiant mallard surrounded by a constellation of dandelion flowers and clocks. And finally, a pony on its back at the side of the road that cuts through Dartmoor. The pony's legs stick up into the air and a cylinder of dung protrudes halfway out of its anus. The pony's genitalia are exposed and she can be identified as a mare. <coughs> Hawk. I am most interested in the claws and feet which are surprisingly municipal in colour, like double yellow lines, while the talons are brown as earwigs. That's not to say the mottled feathers flowing or that gurgle rushing over the corpse so it disintegrates the eyes already white isn't calming, because it is a comfort, this return to water to the stream, to the earth, the mindless torrent of the brook, gentle but insistent as it passes under the broken gate, highballed with moss. Um, I wrote to Mabry of small birds in the aftermath of a four-term stillbirth. Um, I thought I'd read um, one of the poems, I'll read a few from the hospital part of the book. Um, and I noticed earlier that there were some poems in response to the um, echocardia one, um, which I missed, I'm very, very sad to have missed them actually. Um, and this, this, this next one is um, sort of in that vein. Um, it's in a pairing. I don't know if you can see, but it's sort of that shape. Rough. and it's called more blur um, and actually more blur um, is a phrase um, in fact I wrote in my notebook um, screen blue murder and I thought I wonder why we say that I had no idea um, and it's actually a euphemism it, um, it's French um, for more dieu um, which is the death of God but uh, uh, people used to say more blur blue death Brushes, and there's no more. A whirl of empty dresses in this mud cracked room. Palm from feathers, helicopter downwards, shallow roots torn. A broken bird, song explodes on a frequency of earth and lime, too high to hear. We haven't got a heart beat. We haven't got five minutes. A groan of sea shushes up on shore. Rushes and there's no no ha 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 of music and radio. The thud of workmen, clatter of hollow poles, scaffolding. 
A truck in first gear, footsteps, school. An O of bells, clang clangs across the river. And then the hush of marble, eyes unseen, eyes unopened, endlessly eyes. So a surprising amount of bureaucracy in um, death one finds. The paperwork. I sit up in bed, try to make up my mind. Will it change anything if I decide your heart, liver, lungs, kidneys are returned to the abdominal cavity? My forefinger traces a path through option 5C. I understand these parts will not be returned to their original position. Your navel has not yet shriveled. Each toenail is sacred. Under other requests or concerns, hands, feet, face, hair, all must be left intact Brain to be restored to head, skin stitched neatly and correctly. I peer at the page on the doctor's lap. Yes, they may saw through your breastbone, but they'll sew your little tummy up as if you were a rare medieval tapestry. I'll make sure of that. Eyes not to be touched. The doctor bites her lip, writes it in the box. And amongst that um, bureaucracy, I also found quite a profound Humanity. The registrar's office isn't really an office. It's a cupboard with no source of natural light. And I don't realise it, but I'm loved up like the other mothers, gazing at meconium as if it's fresh tar on a road, not an odorless black ship that's been on the boil for nine months. And Lydia, that's the registrar's name, she gives me a paper cone of iced water from the dispenser to calm me down, and it does calm me. The water flows through me, and now we're holding each other, while Simon's down in the mortuary. And I tell her all about how he lost his mother from a brain tumour when I was six months gone, how her name was Lydia too, that it was so quick, and now, this. We're still holding on when he comes back, then joins us in a circle of three, and even another form to fill in and out so many out as the morphine unpeels another mezzanine of hell in a shopping centre where women with rigid quiffs glide up and down glass escalators and people believe in the faux marble fountains, although it's all really a shimmering colon. Anyway, I'm determined, I say, as I leave the room. When I get out of here, if it's the last thing I do, I will get you a window. Because that's not right, expecting someone to live and work and sign death certificates without a window. No one should have to put up with that. It's not right. She's a good person with a good heart. She should have a window. And I went to Spain um, and I wrote, um, I wrote a long sequence of poems in, in the book that are all about the moon. Um, and with a different, I became interested in a different name 
ways that different cultures assign to different moons at different times. Um, and I'm just going to read one of them. Blood. Death is out hunting tonight. The moon, a torch in his hand. Deer, bear, or babies. Sugar skulls and swaddled loaves are offered up for Los Angelitos, while songbirds dart, pick strands <coughs> of flesh from between his teeth, their music constant as he strides. Of course, it doesn't really go like this. <coughs> the doctor wastes 20 minutes trying to scrape a sample from your scalp by the time they slice me open. It's too late. Blood splashed aprons are binned with pointless sharks. Yet still, my love, I long for you as the two caged canaries who hop and whir from the plastic perch to the nest coiled from wire and filled with <coughs> fertilized eggs long for the ravine. Yeah. Um, this poem takes its vocabulary um, well, from three sources, really. Um, <coughs> uh, one that's after a, an artwork in Tate Modern um, by an artist, Dodo um, Sir. It's a big sort of red staircase, it hangs. Um, in the air, um, and then also um, the sort of palette of red, um, and with that also um, the vocabulary of wine. Tasting note for grief, number 17. Long and complex on the palate, rage attacks the taste buds, a territorial robin whose wings coruscate the epiglottis, insidious as rust in a cut. Her jaw has started to clamp. Remembering is a port wine stain. Similes are useless on this red staircase that ascends, an upside down madder route, feeling its way to the sky. She has become a connoisseur of its avoided flavours, Tisha Hughes. The nose has notes of cherry soda, ginger biscuit, song de boeuf. This is one for laying down. It will keep for years under. Called the Art of Birds, um, 
anyway, for a long time. It's, it's a bird that's born and lives and dies in October. It's a spring bird because it's from Chile. Um, well, certainly that's what I thought. But then I kind of realised that some of the birds were looking more mythical within the world. So some of the birds are mythical. I never quite worked out um, about what to bring. But um, it's, uh, yeah, that is it. An aviary of small birds. My love is an aviary of small birds, and I must learn to leave the door ajar. Are you the sparrow who landed when I sat at a slate table sewing lettuces? Webs wander, Lolo Rosso, English cos. Swift and deft you flit and peck, peck, quick as the light that constitutes your spirit. Yes, you were briefer than the Moody's octobreen. So much rain that night. Our room is an ocean where swallows dive. The bubble bursts too soon, too late, too long. All sorts of microscopia swim upstream, float in on summer's storm. The tenor of your heart is true as a tuning fork struck and high. My love is the bird who flies free. The Hippocrates Prize is an annual award for a poem on a medical theme, unpublished, written in English, of up to 50 lines of text. There is an open international category, first prize £5,000, a UK NHS category, first prize £5,000, and a Young Poet Award prize £500.